the time it takes to set up a calendar that's going to plan out your next day, next week, or next month is heavily time consuming. I'm going to tell you how to make the process more efficient while also making it more stress free. My name is Danny Kalani. I'm a Canadian medical student and on my channel, you'll learn how to live a more productive and fulfilling life. In this video, I'm going to teach you about how to avoid decision paralysis in putting together a schedule, as well as a number of tips and tricks on how to more effectively utilize a calendar while also keeping everything stress free. That way you'll decide to continue to use a calendar for longer periods of time. If you're looking for an easy calendar app to use right now, I currently use Google Calendar. And I think that that one's excellent because it allows you to share calendar events with others, utilize multiple different types of schedules, while also being able to set different reminders at different periods of time. It also allows you to add descriptions pretty quickly, which I found really helpful in putting in Zoom links or little descriptions about what needs to be prepared for an event. That way, when your reminders come up, so do your descriptions. Now getting towards how you actually wanna plan out your day. The best way to do it is to take some time the night before and think about two things that you want to accomplish in the next day. It's important that you do this the night before because on the day of, you're going to feel like it's already too late to do that. You could even go ahead and do it over the course of a week prior, but the problem might be that you won't know what's important at the time. Keeping it to the next day gives you a little bit less of a workload, so you'll be more likely to keep up with your calendar. It's important to prioritize only two specific things, two big tasks that you want to accomplish for that day. The reason for that is because if you do any more, it's going to put you in a situation where you're overwhelmed. Another reason for putting two tasks is because you're going to have some tasks that change every day. It's things that come up that are new that you didn't expect would come. And with those, you'll want to be able to have some time available. I know for myself that if I don't spend some time the day before to look over what I need to get done the next day and really just prioritize what I want to focus on for that next 24 hours, I know that it won't be as productive as it could be. I'll spend time trying to figure out what I should be doing during the day, when really that's the time that I should be putting towards getting the most important things out of the way. A key reason for only including two major tasks for each day is because of task switching. Task switching is problematic because every time that we switch from one task to another, it takes us a few minutes to get settled into the task and get even remotely close to a flow state. If we can minimize the number of times that we switch from one task to another, we have the opportunity to be more productive. This also introduces the concept of batching, which is the idea that we should put similar tasks together within our schedule so that we can reduce task switching. So for example, if I wanted to do 200 flashcards in a day, I could do 100 in the morning and 100 in the evening, but that means that I'm introducing one event of task switching which is inefficient. If possible, I should put those 200 cards together at one single point in time and get them done all together. The same concept applies to emailing. If we're checking email every 10 minutes, that means that we have to switch back from email back to the task at hand and switch to email in the next 10 minutes again, and so on. This is highly inefficient and would be disruptive to anyone's workflow. Now in terms of when you should complete these two most important tasks, for me, my mornings are my prime time. It's when I'm the most productive and it's when I know I can get tasks done quickly and effectively. For you, that time might be different. It's important that you effectively use that time to get things done and ensure that there are no distractions at that point in time. The reason for that is because these are your most productive hours and if you don't get it done at that point, it's going to be hanging over you for the rest of the day. Another reason why I like to choose the morning is because it eliminates fatigue as a possible excuse. And I wanna reemphasize that we're not planning every minute of our day out. But there are some tasks that are going to be clear for you. For me, it might be going to classes. For some people with children, it's going to be taking your kids to school or ensuring that they eat breakfast. It's going to be different for everyone, but those tasks should remain relatively constant and you can keep those in your calendar. For those two most important tasks I mentioned earlier, you'll want to make sure that those are given specific time within the schedule. Not the minutia of a task, but rather the bigger picture of that task. Let's say it was important for me to work through some flashcards that day. I'd set aside an hour or two to go through flashcards without setting a specific number to get done. Rather, the 
goal there should really be more qualitative. I want to ensure that I'm getting understanding out of them rather than a specific number. If you wanted to get a reading done for a specific class, you could set aside some time to do that. And that task might take longer than you expected or shorter than you expected. But using a calendar, we should not be stressing out over that. It's not our fault that a task takes longer unless we're inherently responsible for that. For example, if you spent the entire hour on Facebook instead of reading, that would be more on you. We'll talk about how you can set that period up to be as effective and successful as possible. The key to make that time really effective is to weed out any distractions. That could be things like Facebook, checking your email, whatever social media you use, or even just looking at something that is completely unrelated to the task at hand. The key is that while you're working, you shouldn't just put your phone away, but also put it on essentially do not disturb. If the task is being done on your computer, you could also get certain add-ons that will block sites from specific times of day. I've set specific times where I have certain websites like Reddit, social media like Facebook, Instagram, and others blocked in order to ensure that I'm effective and focused during that period of time, because I know that those times are going to be the most valuable parts of my day, and that if I get those done, I'll have time to do other things that I enjoy. For me, when I was studying for the MCAT, I set aside two important tasks every day. Usually that involved doing some readings and making some flashcards for those readings, as well as the second task, which was doing either flashcards or going through practice questions. That worked really well for me since it gave me a little bit of variation with some application and some learning at the same time, while also feeling fulfilled at the end of the day, knowing that I had gotten a good chunk of work out of the way. In setting aside the two important tasks, I was quite specific in what I wanted to read and which flashcards or practice questions I wanted to do. For the readings, I'd choose the subject that I was most behind on, and for the practice questions, I'd choose the things that I'd learned recently so that I could reinforce what I had just learned. Another way to cut out distractions is to minimize the number of times you check email per day. For me, I used to always have the Outlook app or the Mail app on my phone, and I would get constant notifications from emails from a variety of different things, including both spam as well as things that I thought were important. What I noticed was that a lot of these notifications weren't urgent. Especially as a student, I knew that I could get away with checking my email twice a day and not miss out on anything important. For me, the optimal times to check my email are at noon and at 4 p.m. Those are also the times that other people will probably end up responding back to you. This was mentioned in a book that I read called The 4-Hour Workweek. If you're looking for more advice like this in a little bit less distilled form, you can check that book out. The last tip I wanna offer is about deadlines. Deadlines are a major driver for me in terms of both procrastination and motivation to get things done. If a deadline is close, I'll make sure that that's at the top of my list of things to get done. And I feel a sense of urgency in the way that I go about getting that task done. Think about it this way. If you had a paper due two weeks from now, you'd probably put it on the back burner. But if it was due tomorrow, you'd be getting to work immediately and being focused during that time because you know that there's something on the line there. In the same sense, we can take advantage of this pre-existing mindset. You can do this by setting artificial deadlines for yourself of when things need to get done. With that, you can cut out that feeling of procrastination while also maximizing your productivity. Setting artificial deadlines means that you'll work more efficiently because you'll feel a sense of urgency to get it done. If you know that you've set yourself another deadline the next day, and another the day after that, you're gonna feel a sense of urgency because it means that the work is going to pile up. This is the concept of Parkinson's law, which says that a task will expand to fill the time that's allotted to it. It's really important that we keep this in mind while getting things done, which is why artificial deadlines are actually so effective. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'm going to be putting out more valuable content like this. As a current medical student with limited amounts of time, Productivity is one of my best friends. I'm going to teach you how it can be one of yours as well through the tips, tricks, and systems that make a person productive. Making the first steps towards productivity can be difficult, but I'm here to help push you in the right direction. So going forward from this video, you should set a flexible schedule for each day with two of the most important tasks planned out. Those tasks should be slotted into the earliest point in time where you can get it done, and hopefully that point in time is also when you feel most productive. Next, we should make systematic changes to our workflow so that we minimize disruptions 
and maximize efficiency. That means eliminating notifications, social media, and incoming emails. We should also be using artificial deadlines to create a sense of urgency in getting things done. And those artificial deadlines are justified on the basis of Parkinson's law, which says that a task will expand to fill the time that's allotted to it. These mindsets, systems, and tricks that I've shared with you have made my life more productive as a medical student and given me the time that I wanted to be able to spend with family, work on videos like this, and explore hobbies.